might have seen on the Wade's RC Hangar Facebook page that we were taking some pictures of the T28. Um, then you saw the picture of the crashed T28. So what we're going to do basically is kind of give you a little tutorial on what we need to do to replace the fuselage and some of the parts that we broke uh, on the T28. Go over some of the damage here and I'll also post some pictures on there. As you can see, it is kind of crunched up. So what John here is going to do is basically just take the servos out and then he's going to basically just uh, discard the fuselage. Going to take off some of the control horns and some of the other pieces, but for the most part, as you can see here, the motor, the ESC, and all the connections basically ripped right off of it. So we'll work on uh, taking the servos out. As soon as we get that done, we'll move on to the nose. That made it a lot easier to get to them servos. Mm -hmm. Well, the servos were Gorilla glued in, so we just split the fuselage. It's not like it's usable anyways. So that's probably the easiest way on getting these things out. There we go. Now we'll clean them up with a razor blade. Alright, so here you can see we got some servos uh, that are pretty dirty. Just go ahead and clean them up with a razor blade. Alright, when you're cutting with the razor blade, just be a little bit careful that you don't cut your hand because uh, the glue is a little bit rough. So next what we'll do is we'll take the prop and the spinner off, just insert a screwdriver, um, loosen it up, and then the whole assembly will actually come right off. Yeah, that's pretty much what it's going to look like right there. After that, what we're going to do, uh, we'll probably move on to the cowl. We remove the cowl using the screws that are shown here. There'll be one right onto the left side, and then... There should be a one on the right side as well on the red part of the cowl right there. And then there's also a screw on the black piece of the cowl on the top, the opposite side that you're looking at. So go ahead and remove that and it should slide right off. Then all you got to do is just cut the ESC out and then clean that up a little bit. If you've never removed an ESC before, uh, basically the plugs are going to look just like that. All you got to do is pull them apart. They're basic bullet connectors. Alright, so here's our landing gear. The big screw in the middle, not the little ones that are up top, but the lower one, that's what you're going to remove. Basically, it just holds in the landing gear. There's a little flat spot on there, so just unscrew it a couple turns and the landing gear should fall straight out of the bottom. It's pretty simple. Just like that. Alright, you don't need to save any of these pieces because they're all installed on the new fuselage. Alright, so next, the motor. If you notice, the motor is mounted onto a motor mount, which is mounted to the firewall. You only need to remove the motor mount and not the motor from the actual firewall itself. Alright, next what we're going to do is move on to the firewall. If you notice here, there's some cardboard there um, and some extra glue. Go ahead and just use a hobby knife and clean that up. Um, when you open the new fuse, you're going to have some control horns and screws. You're not really going to need those because we've already saved them from the old fuselage. Alright, there's just kind of a look. The uh, control rods are actually already in the airplane. So you don't have to install that, which is going to be kind of nice. But uh, here's a couple other views of the actual clevises and everything that's on them. So you, there's not a lot of detail that needs to be put into actually uh, getting this fuselage ready. Alright. First thing you want to do is basically screw in your control horns, make sure everything fits just right. Alright, here's another view of the back side of the control horns. The two screws simply just screw right in and uh, just make sure it's tight but not too tight. Alright, again there's that cardboard. You need to clean that up. Just make sure it's cleaned up. Also notice that the control horn is already on the landing gear assembly for the steering. There's a picture, just us cutting it off. It's really easy. Just don't cut yourself or don't cut into the firewall because it can break. Alright, now we're going to work on installing the servos into the new fuselage. Uh, these are the two small servo holes where the servos will actually go. Alright, we use Gorilla Glue. Uh, we like Gorilla Glue because it dries you know, quickly, fast, quickly and fast. Um, it dries white and we use water to help cure it. Basically what you do is just dip your finger into the water, rub it a little bit on the outside of the servo, 
All right, once you rub it on the outside of the servo, just put a little bit of glue in the bottom of where the servo's at and place the servo in there and then the glue will actually foam up, fill in the gaps and then dry rather quickly. Basically just like that. Make sure you hold it in place while it's drying so that the servo doesn't slip out. And there's just another shot of us holding it in place. All right, make sure you watch your wire position as well so that you're not gluing wires in and you have enough room to work with those wires to the receiver. All right, and then you can install, install the uh, servo horns just like that. Basically what you do is just hook them up to the rods and then screw the horns onto the servos. Next we'll move on to the ESC. The ESC is a little difficult to get to, so basically just utilize the same method. Put a little bit of glue in, um, and then put a little bit of water. And try to spread the glue out a little bit. Put some water on the ESC, and like I said, it should only be a drop or two, just enough to get it slightly damp. And then once you get it damp, put the ESC in place right in the little slot provided already in the fuselage. Here's a couple of views of where it should go and what it should look like. Next we'll move on to the horizontal stabilizer. Just in case you're curious, uh, we went ahead and posted a picture of what it looks like. We use the white one obviously because we got the red and white T28. And there is the park zone number, PKZ4425. Um, that's going to come with everything you need to put the horizontal stab on. Alright, basically keep in mind you want to look out where the control rods come out and the clevises. Uh, keep that in mind when you put the horizontal stab on, that way you install the uh, control horns in the correct position. All right, we just went ahead and hooked the rudder up so that it didn't get confused um, and it made it easier to put the horizontal stabilizer in. All right, and that's kind of what it should all look like once it's set up. All right, one thing with the horizontal stabilizer that you want to make sure that you do is put the tape on there. Um, it just slid, slides right in and it is a little bit tight, but you want that tape on there. There's kind of a piece, you know, right there. It's kind of hard to take a picture of tape, but make sure you get it on there or the stab will actually wiggle around and cause a loss of control during flight. Once that's done and everything's centered, then you can go ahead and hook up the clevis to the control horn. Alright, we'll move on to the ESC and the motor. Once the ESC is dry, you can go ahead and plug in the wires. Um, just make sure you connect the wires with the matching colors, otherwise the motor will spin in the wrong direction. And then hold your motor up to the firewall and screw in the four screws. And make sure that they're all um, fairly tight, but don't overdo it because you'll strip out the actual uh, plastic, just like so. Alright, here's a picture of what it should look like once it's done. Um, fairly simple. There is going to be a little bit of an angle on it due to the way that it's designed to prevent the torque on it, but that's what it looks like. Alright, go ahead and install your receiver if you haven't already done so. Uh, just simply put it in there. We decided to use double-sided sticky tape and glue it in instead of gluing it in there. Um, we were using the stock AR600 that it came with, so just to keep everything back to the way it was. Alright, another thing that a lot of people overlook, test fit the canopy, because a lot of these things could get warped in shipment, or the canopy, if you're using an old one, might not fit, so test fit it and make sure you don't have any gaps. Alright, we actually used the old canopy and it didn't fit very well, so we're going to have to replace it with a new one, so we can keep it clean. As far as the front landing gear is concerned, just go ahead and replace the front landing gear, stick it into the uh, little slot, but make sure that flat spot meets up right where that screw is at, and then you can screw the screw in to make sure everything's lined up. If you don't, then there is a chance that that landing gear might actually fall out. Replace the cowl, just uh, put it, slide it right back on, make sure it clears the motor, and then screw the three screws on, or back in, and the cowl will be right on. We got lucky and didn't have to order a new cowl because when we crashed it, for some reason the cowl didn't break when we nosed it right into the ground, so that saved us a little bit of money. Replace the spinner and the prop. All you do literally is just the opposite of what you did. Slide it right back onto the motor shaft and tighten it down using a screwdriver or Allen key or whatever you have. <clears throat> okay.
Okay, once everything's installed, then what you'll do is actually uh, basically hook up the servo horn or the clevis to the servo horn. Then what that is going to do is go to the front landing gear. Make sure you bind uh, your transmitter to the receiver. That way all your servos zero out. Okay, digitally trim them all the way to the center position and make sure everything's lined up and then basically uh, adjust your clevises as necessary to get your control surfaces lined up and nice and even. Alright, this is not what you want it to look like when the servos are basically centered. Um, you want your control surfaces to be nice and flat. If so, just take the control horns off using the screw in the center and then place them to where everything should be nice and flat while the servos are actually on and there's electric electricity running through and make sure all your control surfaces are flat. They should look similar to this. Alright, now that you've got all of your control surfaces and everything worked out, uh, just assemble the aircraft and you should have a nice, beautiful looking airplane. Uh, this T-28 is a wonderful flyer, so it's always worth it to rebuild it. I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll definitely get some more videos on here for you. Uh, thanks again for watching Wade's RC Hangar.